calling all FMG aspirants for a quick revision and test series. In this video, we'll be tackling a range of FMT PYQs to give you a personal mock experience. Let us know in the comments how many you get right. Let's get started on this exciting quest to excel in the FMT. Question 1. Which of the following tests cannot be used to detect blood stains? Here are the options. A. Barberio's test. B. Takayama's test. C. Teichmann's test. D. Spectroscopy. And the correct option is A. Barberio's test. Here's the explanation. Now, as I told you, these are the presumptive or screening tests. I discussed everything. Now, I'm coming to the confirmatory test. Now, friends, in confirmatory test, two very, very important tests. Tichman, Tichman test or Takayama test. I would highlight here Tichman Taka. Taka. Tichman Taka. Man. Man is a man. The man color is a brown rhombic crystal. That's a very, very simple trick. The man color is dark brown rhombic crystal. So Tichman will give you dark brown rhombic crystal. Bo both are microscopic. You, we, we can use a word microchemical test. Dark brown rhombic. Takayama, if you see Taka, what is Takatak? Which color is Takatak? That's a very simple trick. The pink color is Takatak. Or we can see the pinkish color is Takatak. So here we will find the pink feathery crystal. So these are two types of crystal which can be seen in Tichman and Takayama. Both are examples of microchemical test. Both are example of microchemical test. We used to see this crystal in the microscope. That's why these are the example of microchemical test. Now, what about the spectroscopy? The most specific test, because in spectroscopy, what we find, we find bends. We find bends. So you can get a question, a very, very important MCQ. The most specific test, or I would say, the most confirmatory test for blood stain is spectroscopy. We'll see the band and we'll completely analyze the blood stain. That this is the blood stain. Question 2. Inquest in a case of custodial death is handled by. Here are the options. A. Police inspector. B. Jail superintendent. C. Superintendent of police. D. Judicial magistrate. And the correct option is D. Judicial magistrate. Here's the explanation. Now, what about the magistrate inquest? So, my dear friend, magistrate inquest is in few specific death. And I have made a very simple trick for this. A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. A, in mental asylum. If any death in mental asylum, magistrate will conduct the inquest. Mental asylum death. B. Death by police beating. If police beating someone and the person dies, this will be very, very important. Or death in bostals. Death in bostals. For delinquent child. The child for rehabilitation in Bostals. In these Bostals, if there is a death, the police will conduct the inquest. Now, the C, very, very important point I am coming to. Custodial death. Death in police custody. Death in police custody. Number four, dowry death. Dahej Hatya. If there is an allegation of dowry death, or my dear friend, if any married woman, if any married woman dies within seven years of her marriage, and if there is a allegation on the in-laws family, it could be a very important case of magistrate inquest. Then exhumation, a very, very potential word I'm coming to, that is exhumation. Exhumation is digging out of the dead body. It is digging out of the dead body, if some dead body has been buried in some place, this is known as exhumation. And the last one is also related with police, that is police firing. 
if death in police firing. I will highlight three important cases. I will highlight three important cases which are related with police death. Number one, police beating. Number two, police custodial death, police custody death. Number three, police firing death. So, police beating death, police custody death and police firing. So, it is very simple thing to remember. These are inquested by judicial magistrate. These are inquested by JM, that is judicial magistrate. All remaining, all remaining are inquested by executive magistrate. All remaining are investigated by executive magistrate. Question 3. Identify the type of homicide caused by smothering and traumatic asphyxia. Here are the options. A. Mugging. B. Garroting. C. Burking. D. Bansdola. And the correct option is C. Burking. Here's the explanation. Burking is actually the word was given by William Hare and William Burke. They killed many people, like 16, 18 people, by this method. And they were sending these people as a cadaver to an anatomist. The name of the anatomist is Robert Knox. And they killed the people to send the cadaver to the anatomist Robert Knox by working. Actually, sir, Burking is a combination of traumatic asphyxia. Burking is a combination of traumatic asphyxia plus homicidal smothering. Plus homicidal smothering. So, so one thing is clear. Burking word we used for homicide. It is a combination of traumatic asphyxia. What is this? You can see this picture. This is sitting on the chest, as you can see, sitting on the chest and smothering. This combination, sitting on the chest and smothering, this combination is known as barking. Question 4. A 23-year-old farm worker from a remote village is brought to the hospital 8 hours later, following a snake bite at 5 in the morning. The patient complained of headache, blurred vision, tingling sensation around the mouth, dizziness, and vertigo and had multiple episodes of vomiting since the bite. He has signs of respiratory depression and bradycardia, HR less than 50. The local wound showed mild swelling and blistering. There are no apparent bleeding manifestations. He was administered 10 vials of antivenom. Which of the following is the subsequent step of management? Here are the options. A. Check the blood coagulation profile. B. Neostigmine with atropine. C. Epinephrine injection. D. IV hydrocortisone. And the correct option is B, neostigmine with atropine. Here's the explanation. Now, sir, other treatment for snack bite, we can use neostigmine. And along with neostigmine, we also use atropine. The dose of neostigmine, it is around 1.5 milligram. And dose of atropine is 0 0.6 milligram. Look, sir, why do we use neostigmine? Actually, sir, everyone knows it is anti-cholinesterase. It is anti-cholinesterase. So, it will increase acetylcholine effect. It will increase the acetylcholine effect. It will reverse the, the symptom of respiratory failure or a symptom of neurorespiratory failure, neuroparalytic symptom, it will control. This is neostigmine is used. Now, why do we use atropine, sir? Atropine, because it is increasing acetylcholine, we are using atropine to control muscarinic effect of acetylcholine. We are using to control muscarinic effect of acetylcholine, we are using atropine. So, these are given in cobra bite, neostigmine plus atropine. And my dear friend, just remember one more important concept. The neostigmine action is on postsynaptic toxin action. 
my dear friend the post synaptic toxin action is a action of cobra question 5 you are working as an internal medicine consultant at a private clinic a patient with a chronic renal disease requiring hemodialysis is admitted under you you advise diet and fluid control and keep him under observation however the patient progresses to take ayurvedic supplements and sometimes skips your instructions without disclosing it his conditions worsen and he develops difficulty in breathing. His attendant files a complaint in court alleging the negligence of the doctor. Which of the following acts as a defense for the doctor in court? Here are the options. A. Vicarious liability. B. Res ipsa loquata. C. Therapeutic misadventure. D. Contributory negligence. And the correct option is D. Contributory negligence. Here's the explanation. Now sir, contributory negligence. Contributory negligence means negligence contributed by doctor and patient. Now, example. If the patient is not taking treatment properly after prescription, patient is not coming for follow-up, not taken treatment, not gone for the follow-up, patient has not given the proper history. It means, sir, the contribution of the patient is also there. And my dear friend, contributory negligence is a defense in civil case, not a criminal case. So doctor can say, sir, there was a contribution from patient. Sir, here burden of proof lies on a doctor. Sir, I told you, in civil case, the patient needs to prove, in civil case, civil negligence, the patient needs to prove civil negligence. But sir, this is exception, contributory negligence. Doctor needs to prove that there was a contribution from patient. Ki bhai, patient ne galti ki thi. And Dr. Saab, it is a partial defense. It is a partial defense, not a complete defense, my dear friend. Contributory negligence is not a complete defense. Question 6. A patient was referred by a doctor to a radiologist for a CT scan and the doctor was given money for the referral. What is this unethical act called? Here are the options. A. Dichotomy. B. Medical malicurrence. C. Criminal negligence. D. Commission. And the correct option is A. Dichotomy. Here's the explanation. Now, sir, I'm coming to very, very important word. D. D is dichotomy. What is dichotomy, sir? Actually, in simple word, dichotomy is fee splitting. In simple word, dichotomy is fee splitting of patient it means you have taken the fee from the patient and now sir what you are doing you are dividing this fee in commission either you are giving commission or you are taking commission either you are giving commission to medical representative pharmacist other doctor this is known as dichotomy taking fee from the patient Getting commission or giving commission, this is known as dichotomy. Question 7. In the case of drowning, the following finding is seen at autopsy. What is it called? Here are the options. A. Cadaveric spasm. B. Cutis ansarina. C. Rigor mortis. D. Washerwoman's hands. And the correct option is A. Cadaveric spasm. Here's the explanation. The most characteristic finding of antimortem drowning is cadaveric spasm. What is cadaveric spasm? Sir, these are actually clenched hand with some grass particle. So I, I will show you the picture you can see. This is cadaveric spasm. These are clenched hand with some grass particle. What does it indicate? Like the body has been taken out. What does it indicate? It, it indicates you struggle in water. You struggle in water, your hand are clenched, your hand are clenched and some grass particles were there inside the hand and after death, grass was there, after death, your hand remained spasm, after death, your hand remains spasm, this is known as cadaveric spasm. And as I told you, it is the most characteristic finding. If you get a question, what is the most 
characteristic finding of anti-mortem drowning, the answer is clenched hand with some grass particle. Because if this is present, that means it 100% says that you died in the water. It 100% says that you died inside the water. This phenomena is known as cadaveric spasm. Question 8. Which of the following is an abnormal method used for criminal abortion? Here are the options. A. Dilatation and carotage. B. Mifepristan. C. Abortion stick. D. Vacuum aspiration. And the correct option is C. Abortion stick. Here's the explanation. Violent method, my dear friend. Now, first I'll discuss the local violent method. In local violent method, the first is syringing. In syringing, we use a very important Higginson syringe. Higginson syringe. What we do in Higginson syringe? We put either air or soft water in uterus. This is known as syringing method. This is known as syringing method. Rupturing of the membrane. My dear friend, rupturing of the membrane can be done by any pointed object. It can be done by any pointed object that will cause abortion. Abortion stick, I will discuss in detail. Dilation of cervix, another potential word, very, very important. Dilation of cervix, it can be done by slippery M bark and drugs. Few drugs which can dilate the cervix and slippery M bark, which is this, this slippery M bark is used in Central and North Africa. Central and North Africa, it is used slippery M bark. So, dilation of cervix. So, dilatation of cervix, it is caused by either slippery M bark and some drugs. Dilation in curitas and air insufflation, these are the other methods. But, sir, these are locally violent used method. Just remember the trick syringing. What's the name of the syringe? Higginson. Disrupturing of the membrane by pointed object, abortion stick, dilation of the cervix by slippery M bark or some drugs which causes cervical dilation and dilation and curitas. Now, my dear friend, abortion stick, how do we made abortion stick? Actually, friends, abortion stick is a bamboo stick. Abortion stick is a bamboo stick 12 to 18 centimeter in long. And Doxa, what is there? We put a cotton or cloth piece in front of this abortion stick. And it is soaked with juices, some juices. We use calotropis. We can use castor juice, any irritant. What are the common plant we can use for abortion stick? We can remember by a trick, P. colas. P. colas. What is P? Plumbago. What is P? Plumbago. What is E? Ergot. What is C? Calotropis or castor, I mentioned here. What is O? Very, very important, sir. O for oleander. O for oleander. This oleander could be white oleander or yellow oleander. This could be white oleander or yellow oleander. Everyone knows that white oleander is nerium odorum. Nerium, nerium, near, near pani white hota, nerium odor. Yellow oleander is cerebra thevesia. So, nerium odorum or cerebra thevesia, these are common oleander, white, near, nerium odorum. So, nerium odorum is a white oleander. We can use some product of lead. And my dear friend, lead, copper, and mercury are commonly used. A, we can use aconite. A, we can use aconite. A, we can use abrus precatorius, abrus plant. And A, we can use one metal also that is arsenic. So, these are commonly used. And also, if you want to go in detail, one pest we use, one pest we use this pest is uterus pest. This pest is uterus pest. And my dear friend, this uterus pest is composed of iodine plus potassium iodide. Uterus pest. So, if you get a question, uterus pest is pest which is used for criminal abortion. Uterus. The one product of lead we can use. One product of lead we can use, dichilone. 
यूटस पेस्ट वॉट इज यूटस पेस्ट पेस्ट ऑफ आयोडीन प्लस पोटेशियम आयोडाइड सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर पी कोलास these are the common plant these are the common irritant which causes uterine contraction so my dear friend the mechanism of abortion stick it will be uterine contraction it will be uterine contraction after vaginal irritation it will cause contraction of the uterus that's a very very important question 9 a child after eating an unknown fruit has been brought to your emergency department with the following signs and symptoms dry mouth irrelevant slurred speech dry and hot skin and dilated pupils on examination there was tachycardia and hypothermia what is the most probable diagnosis here are the options a poppy seeds poisoning b detura poisoning c mushroom poisoning d cannabis poisoning and the correct option is b detura poisoning here's the explanation now sir datura is purely a anticholinergic plant and it is also known as 9d poison what are the 9d sir every d comes in your mind every d first start with dryness of skin and mouth then dysphagia difficulty in swallowing dilated pupil my dear friend it is considered as the earliest symptom or very early symptom that is causing dilated pupil drunken gait dysarthria dysarthria slurred speech this arthria my dear friend then delirium and also this delirium is specifically it is a muttering delirium it is a muttering delirium there is a slurred speech and slowness of the body this is known as muttering delirium drowsiness and the last is death last is death because of the respiratory muscle involvement this is causing death this is known as 9d question 10 gutter fracture of skull bone is associated with impact due to here are the options a a sharp object b a blunt object c fall from height d bullet and the correct option is d bullet here's the explanation gutter fracture sir gutter which forms gutter sir this bullet which is causing gutter fracture in the skull bone this is a oblique bullet this is a oblique bullet and it is coming tangentially tangential tangential oblique bullet and my dear friend table it is a fracture in outer table it is a gutter formation in outer table so it is a oblique bullet a tangential bullet which is forming a gutter in outer table so doctor sir this is very simple gutter formation in outer table this kind of bullet which is tangential and oblique this is known as glancing bullet this is known as glancing bullet so you can easily remember sir g for glancing g for it causes gutter fracture glancing now you can see see this is g for glancing bullet this is causing gutter fracture it is a oblique tangential bullet and it's a gutter formation in outer table see gutter formation in outer table see if this is a bullet yes and if this bullet is a oblique and tangential bullet yes this will form a gutter this will form a gutter in the outer table and will go this is known as gutter fracture so this skull fracture this is known as gutter fracture a very very potential one oblique tangential bullet which is known as a glancing bullet yaad karne ka tarika it's very simple g glancing g gutter question 11 which ipc section is related to medical negligence here are the options a sec 301 b sec 304 b c sec 304 a d sec 302 and the correct option is c sec 304 a here's the explanation now 304 a and 304 b how would you remember a a for accident a for accident b you can remember b for bride or bahu b for bride or bahu that's a very simple tr trick sir by any rash and negligent act you causes death and even sir medical negligence comes under the same ipc medical negligence comes under the same ipc the punishment is 2 year plus minus fine 
So the trick is very simple. A for accident. By rash and negligent, you are causing death. Question 12. A 30-year-old apparently healthy man who was carrying laxatives and enema apparatus developed abdominal pain at the airport and an x-ray was done which appears as shown below. Which of the following is the likely diagnosis? Here are the options. A. Bezos syndrome. B. Piker due to anemia. C. Body Packer syndrome. D. Constipation due to fecalith. And the correct option is C. Body Packer syndrome. Here's the explanation. Now, sir, a very, very important word comes. What is a body packer syndrome? And what is a body stuffer syndrome? Body packer syndrome and body stuffer syndrome. Sir, what they do, body packer, see, they take the drug and they put the drug in some, I would say, the polythene or in condom in a planned way. In a planned way. In a planned way. And where they put? They put either they swallow. Either they swallow. Or they put in the orifices like uh, vagina, rectum. So this is a planned. You can, you can use this for drug smuggling. You can use this for drug smuggling this is known as body pecker syndrome you can see and it is also known as surgical mole syndrome surgical mole syndrome so they do in a they do it in a planned way okay question 13 a gunshot case brought for autopsy showed an entry wound with inverted margins surrounded by tattooing but blackening and singeing of hairs is not noted what is the most possible range of firing here are the options a Contact shot. B. Near shot. C. Close shot. D. Distant shot. And the correct option is B. Near shot. Here's the explanation. As you can see, very simple, sir. And I'm telling you a very simple trick. O. R. S. O. R. S. These are the shape of the entry. These all are the shape of the entry. C. In contact shot, as I told you, it can be this one. Yes, my dear friend. Stellate or cruciate. Simple, sir. Oh, my dear friend. This is very, very important. O look like circular. So, circular entry wound is seen in the close range less than 1 meter. Close range less than 1 meter. Now, near range, my dear friend. R. R for rat hole shape. R for rat hole shape. So, what will be there? It will be the entry wound with nibbled margin. Entry wound with nibbled margin it look like rat hole shape now sir as i told you dispersion of the pellet starts at two meter or two more than two meters so it starts so there will be a large entry wound now the dispersion has starts so dispersion has started there will be a multiple small pellet entry wound so this is large and this is small my dear friend this is known as S for satellite entry wound. So, you can see what trick I told you. It's very simple trick I told you. See, S for satellite. Yes. R for retol shape with nibbled margin. Nibbled margin or scalloping. And O, it is O. It is O. It's a circular one. In distant range, my dear friend, what will happen? In distant range, there will be individual pellet entry wound. There will be individual pellet entry wound individual pellet entry wound this will be seen after 4 meter as you can see dispersion starts at more than 2 meter or 2 to 4 meter as i told you so this will be a range which is intermediate this will be a range which is intermediate complete dispersion after 4 meter that is a distant range okay that will be individual pellet entry wound so looks like these are the shape of entry wound entry wound appearance entry wound. Now, sir, muzzle impression can only be present here, absent, 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 absent. Now, sir, burning, burning, blackening and tattooing. Sir, here it will be inside the track. I already told you. Here it will be inside the track in contact. Yes. In close range, all three will be present. Burning, blackening and tattooing all will be present. Yes.
बट सर इन नियर हाउ वुड रिमेंबर नियर नियर आर फॉर रेट शिप आर रेट होल शिप इट विल बी ओनली एंड ओनली टैटुइंग इन नियर रेंज इट विल बी ओनली एंड ओनली टैटुइंग इंटरमीडिएट रेंज ओल विल बी एबसेंट डिस्टेंट रेंज ओल विल बी एबसेंट सो दीज आर सम वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ट्रिक आई टोल्ड यू ओ आर एस यू कैन रिमेंबर इंडिविजुअल पैलेट एंट्री वोट आर सीन एट द डिस्टेंट रेंज डिस्टेंट रेंज क्वेश्चन फोर्टीन Identify the fingerprint pattern shown in the image. Here are the options: A. Whorl. B. Composite. C. Loop. D. Arch. And the correct option is D. Arch. Here's the explanation. Arches. So, look, sir. Loop come towards each other. Arches diverge. Arches is just like a mountain. And my dear friend. it doesn't come towards each other it is diverging diverges and composite this is the least common composite is least common and my dear friend it is only seen in 1 to 3% population and friend it is a mixed pattern friend it is a mixed pattern so love wife and children most common loop second whorl love wife and and arch and children it is composite i have told you now sir if you see if you see before going to this detail first i'll tell you this is loop variety this is arch variety and this is whorl variety now i am going in bit detail okay see sir something which is coming towards each other this is ridges are coming towards each other this is known as this point is known as core core okay ridges coming from three direction towards each other yes ridges coming this first direction second direction and third direction from three direction ridges coming towards each other this meeting point is known as delta so there is one word which is core core is just like ridges recurs towards each other and meeting from point from three direction it is known as delta now i will explain don't worry see if you see this fingerprint yes it is this is one core yes my dear friend these are covering these are converging okay this is converging so this is having one core in the loop pattern and this is it is three directional yes this is one delta one core and one delta in loop variety now sir if you see this pattern my dear friend this is nothing is converging yes my dear friend nothing is converging it is going in this direction and there is no delta as well so my dear friend in this i can say there is no core no delta no core no delta but sir here you can see the three directional convergence yes the three directional convergence are 2d 2 delta but there is no core so it will be no core and 2 delta in whorl pattern composite is a mixed pattern again i am telling you in loop variety we have one delta plus one core in arch variety plain arch variety no core and no delta because it's a divergence divergence mein na to core banta na delta delta is three directional meeting point and core is convergence c for core core is convergence question 15 during an autopsy the doctor tied the bronchus and immersed the lung in water to check whether it floats or sinks this test is identified as here are the options a gettler's test b plocket's test c hydrostatic test d diatoms test and the correct option is c hydrostatic test here's the explanation now hydrostatic test first it is based on the specific gravity second it is based on residual air or residual volume residual air not tidal volume it is not based on the tidal volume it is based on residual air or residual volume residual air is a air which comes after respiration in lung and in physiology you must have gone through it cannot be expired it cannot be expired even with forceful expiration even with this you cannot expire 
So this is known as residual air or residual volume. So it is a test of residual air or residual volume. I'll explain it again. Anyways, this is the simple principle. So there are two important concepts. Specific gravity after respiration become less than one, that is 0 0.94. And presence of the residual volume in respiration, in respired lung. These are the two reasons. These are the two reasons. That's why your hydrostatic test is positive. I will tell you the mechanism also. Don't worry. Now, how, how will you do hydrostatic test or Breslau first type test? It is also known as hydrostatic test. How will you do? Now, sir, what you will do, the first step, what you will do, the first step, you will put lung in bucket of water. Okay. If lung pieces are, see, this is your lung. If lung pieces are floating, this I have mentioned, this is bucket of water. You are putting the lung. If lung pieces are floating, if lung pieces are floating, that means it could be a case of respiration. But sir, here along with this, you will do control test. And, and also, how will you get the lung? You just tie up the bronchi. You just tie up the bronchi and take the lung out. And you put the lung in bucket of water. But again, I am telling you, simultaneously, you will do the control test. Because everyone knows the liver is solid in consistency. If this is bucket, yes. And you are putting liver. If you are putting liver inside the bucket. And if liver is floating, my dear friend. If liver is floating. Very, very important concept I am coming to. If liver is floating, that means, my dear friend, liver should not float. Normally, normally liver sinks. Normally, liver sinks because liver is a solid organ. But if liver is floating, that means it's a case of putrefaction. It's a case of putrefaction. Putrefaction is a gas formation in the organ. So if, why do I am doing this particular test as a control test? If liver is floating, it's a case of putrefaction. No need to go for hydrostatic test. This is a, this lung always will float. It doesn't indicate about the respiration. So that is a very, very important. If liver is floating, no need to go for the hydrostatic test. Because that doesn't give the idea about the respiration or residual air. Okay. Now, second. Second step of this. First, if lung is floating, it may be positive. Simultaneously, you will do this test. This test. Second, what you will do? You will take multiple, almost 12 to 20 pieces of lung. Then you will put these pieces, yes, on water surface. If these are floating, you will go for the next step. If these are sinking, na, it's a negative. Lung pieces are sinking, it's a negative. Lung pieces are sinking, it's a negative. But if these are floating, you will go for the next step. So this is the step number one. The lung pieces, this is step number two. Now the step number three. What you have done? You have squeezed the lung pieces. You can squeeze the lung pieces between thumb or index finger. Why are you squeezing the lung pieces? To remove the tidal air. To remove the tidal air or tidal volume. It can be by stone you can squeeze. You can squeeze between thumb and index finger. Even after this squeezing, if lung pieces are floating, yes, my dear friend, if lung pieces are floating, then you would say that this is positive hydrostatic test that indicate the fetus has respired. Respiration was present. Again, I am telling you, take the lung, put in water. If it's floating, yes, okay, it may be a respired lung. But just take a control because liver is a control. If liver is floating, it's a putrefied liver. If, putrefac put if putrefaction has taken place, the lung will also have some air. No need to go for hydrostatic test. Because lung will have a putrefaction gases. No need to go for the hydrostatic test. Now, after this, take some lung pieces, put in water. If these are... Question 16. A 72 farmer was present in the hospital with pinpoint pupils and increased secretions. The diagnosis is, here are the options.
A. Alcohol poisoning. B. Opioid poisoning. C. Organophosphorus poisoning. D. Detura poisoning. And the correct option is C. Organophosphorus poisoning. Here's the explanation. These are the tests which are used for diagnosis of organophosphate. Which is the most specific? Kya bologe? RBC. Which is the most sensitive? Pseudo or butyryl or plasma cholinesterase level. And these are the tests. And if you give the atropine and the symptoms are relieved, it is also a very good significant finding. That it's an organophosphorus poisoning. Paranitrophenol. Now, Dr. Sab, I am coming to the first cholinergic symptom. And in cholinergic, first I will discuss muscarinic, muscarinic symptoms. And Dr. Sab, muscarinic symptom, you can remember by a very simple trick, dumbbells. You can add S also dumbbells. Now, you can see diarrhea, urination, meiosis, constriction of pupil, a very, very important one, constriction of pupil, muscle weakness, then bronchorrhea. Apart from bronchorrhea, you can see the bronchospasm. And a very, very important one, bradycardia, because of the action of the M2 receptor. Bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, a very, very important one, lacrimation. And the last is increased salivation. If you want to add one more L, it is lethargy. If you want to add one more L, it would be lethargy. So actually, sir, what I would like to tell you, the old secretion of the body are increased. Like crimation, salivation, urination, defecation, everything is increased. Very simple. Everything is increased. Question 17. McNaughton's rule is, here are the options. A. IPC 82. B. IPC 83. C. IPC 84. D. IPC 85. And the correct option is C. IPC 84. Here's the explanation. Now, sir, as I told you, McNaughton rule was implemented in 1843. Now, the, the trick comes in action. 1843, in India, we apply 84 IPC for insane. It's a modification of the McNaughton rule in India. We apply 84 IPC. As I told you, if you commit the crime, you require two things. Manseria actus reus. Manseria actus reus. Criminal mind intent or forbidden act. Now, what is 84 IPC? Nothing is an offense. Now, in McNaughton rule, it was defect of reason due to disease of mind. Okay. But what is a modification in 84 IPC? Nothing an offense which is done by a person who at the time of doing it. My dear friend, I am highlighting this point. By reason of unsoundness of mind, here the highlighted point is unsoundness of the mind, is incapable of the nature, knowing the nature of the act or that he is doing what is either wrong or contrary to the law. So here the word which is very important, unsoundness of the mind. We have two minds, sound mind and unsound mind. Because of the unsoundness of mind, he is not aware about the nature and quality of the act. He is not aware whether it's a right or wrong. Unsoundness of the mind, which is a very, very important terminology for 84 IPC. Question 18. What is the IPC section for causing abortion without a woman's consent? Here are the options. A. 312. B. 313. C. 314. D. 315. And the correct option is B. 313. Here's the explanation. Criminal abortion. It is a illegal abortion. My dear friend, if it is with the consent of mother, I already discussed this in detail. With consent of mother, it is 312. If it is without consent of mother, if it is without consent of mother, you are going for criminal abortion 313. Question 19. Grounds of divorce. Here are the options. A. Sterility. B. Frigidity. C. Impotence developing after the marriage. D. Poverty. And the correct option is C. Impotence developing after the marriage. Here's the explanation. Very confusing question comes in exam. What are the ground for divorce? Actually, if the question comes in exam, which is the best ground for divorce? And these three options are given. C. Impotence after marriage. Frigidity. And impotence. Now, my dear friend. If you are important at the time of marriage, as I already told you, 
if you are important at the time of marriage it is not a divorce it is a voidable marriage it is a voidable marriage so it will be part of null and void marriage it will be part of null and void marriage this will be come in nullity so it is not a ground of divorce importance importance at the time of marriage is not a ground of divorce it's a voidable marriage as i already told you so only two options are left what are the ground of divorce importance after marriage first second frigidity the best ground is importance after marriage the second option will be frigidity question 20 in corrosive acid case is opened along here are the options a lesser curvature b greater curvature c vertical d pylorus and the correct option is b greater curvature here's the explanation now sir a very very important organ that is stomach first you have to keep in your mind sir stomach is open from greater curvature stomach is open from greater curvature why not lesser curvature i will tell you and my dear friend for stomach we use double ligature method we are using two ligature on both end we are using two ligature on both end everyone knows this is the cardiac end of the stomach and this is the pyloric end of the stomach we are using two ligature this is ligature number 1 this is ligature number 2 on one side this is ligature number 1 and this is ligature number 2 on another side and then we put the cut in between then we put the cut in between so the stomach contents are preserved not destroyed these are present in that then we cut that now my dear friend why we are opening it from greater curvature because if you have if you have the acid or corrosive poisoning if you have the acid or corrosive poisoning the maximum damage is on the lesser curvature this is your lesser curvature the maximum damage in the lesser curvature this phenomena is known as mesenstrasy mesenstrasy so looks up to preserve the lesser curvature to see all the finding of the lesser curvature we open it from greater curvature by double ligature method by double ligature method this is two ligature on both side cardiac and pyloric and cut cut between these two ligature open with greater curvature and examine the lesser curvature because maximum damage in the corrosive poison it is on lesser curvature question 21 death registration in india done within here are the options a 21 days b 28 days c 30 days d 40 days and the correct option is a 21 days here's the explanation now sir what will happen that doctor will form a mccd what is mccd medical certification of cause of death and this form is 4a or 4 form for number 4 along with that report that report is form these two are sent my dear friend to the government as i told you to the registrar and that uh, the sub registrar so this is sent to the registrar or sub registrar of the state government and that has to give the death certificate death certificate within 21 days so doctor and the, the the mccd and this death report has to be sent within 21 days and the death certificate has to be made within 21 days question 22 estimation of age at death and determination of the sex of the victim or remains are important factors in the identification of an individual in forensic odontology Teeth are among the most reliable tools in the process of identification of age. Teeth are one of the most durable parts of our body, which can withstand more assaults than any other part of the body. This is particularly useful in the identification of bodies in mass disasters and natural calamities. The first scientific technique for age estimation in adults was presented by Gustafsson, 1950. It was based on longitudinal sections of teeth cut through the central area. The technique consisted of attributing scores from 0 to 3 for the presence and amount of age related changes such as attrition, periodontal ligament retractions, secondary dentin formations, root translucency and root resorption. The most reliable criteria among Gustafsson's criteria is here are the options: A. root resorption, B. periodontosis, 
C. Translucency of root. D. Attrition. And the correct option is C. Translucency of root. Here's the explanation. Gustafsson method, my dear friend. Now it is obsolete, not used. Sir, it is used for age more than 25 years of age. Gustafsson method. Sir, most commonly which teeth are used? Anterior teeth are used. And in anterior, the most common teeth used are incisor. And the posterior teeth are not suitable. That is molar are not suitable. It means sir, if you get a question, what is the best teeth for Gustafsson method? The answer is incisor. And it is useful after 25 years of age, but nowadays it is not used because there are many failures. What are the six criteria, sir? This question comes in exam. Six X-ray criteria. Six X-ray criteria we use in the Stapson method. Number one, script, I told you the trick. Script, I told you the trick. S, secondary dentine. C, cementum opposition. Secondary dentine, cementum opposition. Root resorption attrition i is attrition yes i is attrition p para dentosis which is also known as gum regression and t the last one is a very very important Transparency of tooth or root of the tooth or tooth. And also a few questions comes. Script, secondary dentine, cementum opposition, root resorption, attrition, and paradentosis, which is also known as gum regression. And the last is transparency of tooth. You can get a question. Which is the best criteria that is transparency of root? And which is Second best criteria that is secondary dentine. Second, secondary dentine. Question 23. The time limit for ordering an exhumation in India is. Here are the options. A. 1 year. B. 10 years. C. 20 years. D. No limit. And the correct answer is D. No limit. Here's the explanation. Now I'm coming to a very, very important word exhumation. Sir, if you remember, I told you in the court of law chapter, I told you in court of law chapter, exhumation is digging out of the dead body. What is exhumation? It is digging out of the dead body. It is digging out of dead body. Digging out. Exhumation doesn't mean it's autopsy. Digged out of the dead body in presence of magistrate. I told you exhumation is a magistrate inquest. So, very, very important, sir. It is a magistrate inquest. It comes under 176 subclause 3 CRPC. I told you PM, police magistrate, Choka Chakka. So, exhumation comes under magistrate inquest. And at the time of exhumation, there should be magistrate, there should be police officer, there should be doctor. That's what we require. It is digging out of the dead body. But just remember, my dear friend, after digging out of the dead body, we go for autopsy if needed. Autopsy is there. And my dear friend, it's not a primary autopsy. It is a secondary autopsy. So exhumation, if you get a question, what is the meaning of exhumation? It's a digging out of the dead body only. This is exhumation. Then we go for autopsy. That is a different thing. Autopsy is required. Now, magistrate, police and doctors, these are the people required. 176.3 CRPC. Sir, first identify the site by the help of relatives, accused, anyone. Identify the site. And after identify the site, exhumation is started early in the morning. Early in the morning. Why it is started early in the morning? Because we require the whole daylight. We require the whole daylight, bright daylight we require. That's why it started early in the morning. So, exhumation is done early in the morning. There is no time limit of exhumation, sir. Sometimes the area covered are very much high so we can require few days also 
So there is no time limit for the exhumation. A very famous case, Nitari Khan, we all know that. So there is no time limit for exhumation. Question 24. First putrefaction change in a dead body. Here are the options. A. Maggot formation. B. Greenish discoloration of right iliac fossa. C. Mummification. D. None of the above. And the correct option is B. Greenish discoloration of the right iliac fossa. Here's the explanation. Now first I'll discuss color change. Sir, two question comes in exam. First internal change of the putrefaction or first overall change of the putrefaction. My dear friend, both have the same answer. It is, as the color is showing, it is reddish brown. It is reddish brown discoloration of aortic intima. It is reddish brown discoloration of aortic intima. First internal change and first overall change of putrefaction because of the bacterial activity. But sir, now I am coming to my favorite MCQ. First external change. First external change is greenish discoloration. It is greenish discoloration of right iliac fossa. It is greenish discoloration of right iliac fossa of this area. Question 25. Superimposition technique is used for. Here are the options. A. Skull. B. Pelvis. C. Femur. D. Ribs. And the correct option is A. Skull. Here's the explanation. Superimposition technique, my dear friend. Just remember 3 S. S for superimposition. S for we use skull x-ray. And as for, it is a screening test. Very simple, sir. As for superimposition, as for screening test, as for skull x-rays. Join us for a quick PYQ session on orthopedics tomorrow. Gentle reminder to drop a like and help us reach other FMG aspirants. Share with a friend who might need a reality check. See you tomorrow.